reasonably, I wouldn't say warm, but maybe a cool spring morning. Or, uh, what am I talking about? Spring evening. Uh, and speaking of that, <clears throat> look, I know it's not, like, technically winter. It's just... It's just a name. Don't don't freak out about the fact that, I mean, I'm gonna keep calling it the winter bulk for the next few months. <clears throat> don't uh, don't be surprised. But yeah, plan is for arms, and I think I want to do a bit of a superset style today. So, you maybe not superset, but kind of an alternating approach, because usually I like to think. All right, if I'm doing two muscle groups at once, or in one lift, triceps, biceps, then I want to give each one my individual attention until it's done, and then move on to the next muscle group. That's sort of probably the logic that I lean towards more often. But on the other hand, going back and forth, if I'm really in a time crunch, I, uh, I wouldn't mind a set of tricep pushdowns supersetted immediately into a set of curls like no rest like put the weight down and then immediately do a set of curls uh but then for that set of curls you're a little bit pre-exhausted not from the pushdowns themselves but kind of you know, you've used a bit of uh let's just say your breath so usually i wouldn't like doing it like that unless i'm really in a rush so what i end up doing <clears throat> which is Still leaning towards more so the alternating style, but <clears throat> with a little bit more individual attention on either side is um, kind of alternating by twos in a way. So two sets for triceps, be it a push down or a machine dip. Well, I, actually, let's, let's back up even further. First, it's going to start off with a small warm up. So I'm going to sit on the tricep push down machine or the cables, whatever. Single arm, light shit, get my elbows warm. If I try to jump straight into really heavy weight, for one thing, it's gonna hurt my elbows. But then also, it's, I mean, it's not like you can't draw upon your muscles' strength immediately, right? I can sit here and flex my bicep pretty hard. But if I try to do a set of curls right now with the, let's just say with the 70s, even if I could physically do it, I probably wouldn't get as many reps as I would if I were properly warmed up. You know, not not even just talking about the sake of the fact that it's gonna make you so much less prone to like injury. I mean, jumping straight into a heavy working set with no warm up, that's uh, eesh, man, come on, blasphemous. But just going through the action of kind of, you know, firing your biceps and neurons or whatever else as you do warm up reps and getting exposed to more and more weight I mean, it really does warm you up. So I'll kind of go back and forth between some curls, light, tricep pushdowns, light, gradually go heavier, heavier. No working sets, just enough to get warm. And then I'll actually start the lift. A few sets of pushdowns, probably straight bar, but maybe I'll do single arm, alternating it. Who's to say, really? I, I'm not too picky when it comes to my arm training. Because as far as I can tell you, you've got three basic movements. Like skull crusher style stuff, push downs and dips for triceps. And then for buys, you got curls of a few varieties, but basically just a curl. Or, you know, bicep bias pull downs, which I'm sure I'll do a little bit of. But I'm not so picky with the order. Like with something like chest, you're not really going to catch me doing cable flies before pressing. Usually that's just not how I do it. Uh, but then again, it's just kind of a habit. I'm not saying that's the absolute best way. Usually I want to do my heavy pressing first and then finish with flies. But arms, you know, since it's such a small muscle group, or, I mean, that might not be the only reason, but I don't really mind hitting it from all sorts of ways, right? From the front, the back, flip it around, you know, whatever. It's like, if I start with a set of dumbbell curls, or if I start with a set of machine curls, or preacher curls, or cable curls, I mean, what am I really doing here? Even if it's by my side, you know, over my head, or like a weird crossbody variation, really, you're just kind of hitting your biceps, you know? 
So, <clears throat> I don't overthink the arm training too much. Uh, but, yeah, maybe I can't really tell you exactly how many sets I'll end up doing. But by the time I feel like I've done enough work, my arms, <clears throat> my arms feel satisfactorily fatigued as well as pumped to hell. That's one reason why I do like kind of a super steady alternating style for arms. Because usually when I do my arm workouts, I do all triceps, all of biceps, and then pose down. So by the time I actually take the pump cover off and I'm like flexing, my tricep pump is diminished a little bit. But by doing both at once, then you know I get to see my arms fully pumped, which oof, you know, who doesn't love that? So, reasonably, not low intensity, but in terms of the amount of, like, fatigue my body is going to feel after this lift, not that bad. I'm definitely not going to be so tired when I sit down in the car and finally get to relax tonight, as I was yesterday after just quads, even though quads was just one muscle group. So, if you have a lighter lift like that, if you're just going to the gym to do shoulders one day, or you know, whatever, arms, just something where you're not, you know, seriously exerting yourself to the point of like where you feel like you're going to pass out like a squat or like really heavy bent over rows or something. Just the fact that it's kind of an easier lift in terms of the fact that it's not going to like completely gas you out. Uh, you know, just try not to take that as a, as a cue to take your foot off the gas. If anything, that should kind of make you say, okay, this set of the 40 pound dumbbell curls I'm about to do, it's not going to put me in the hospital. But I'm going to try my hardest to make it, you know. So, with smaller lifts like these, I feel like it's a little bit more. Hmm. I was about to say, I feel like I was, I was getting ready to say, I feel like they're a little more mental. But uh, no, they're all fucking mental, you know. It's not, um. <clears throat> How do I want to word this? Yeah, that might be a little too philosophical. It's it's too long to explain. All I'm trying to what I'm trying to think of there is like, you know, your mind leads and your body follows. You know, so if you're capable of pushing yourself to uncomfortability 99% of the time when you're in the gym, then, you know, the fact that your bicep feels like it's going to fucking explode doing a set of, like, pause rep light curls or whatever, you know? The harder you can push through that uncomfortability, the better. Because you got to remember, that is, apart from the fact that people are, you know, maybe just can't get the gym into their schedule or they're just not into it, uh, the uncomfortability factor of lifting, that is the key component which is blocking people from going hard, you know? If you took a hundred people and you, you know, put a Neuralink brain scanner into their mind and you had them do, <clears throat> I'm not even talking about heavy weight, let's say a weight which physically they could all get 20 reps. Like if they push to their absolute maximum, everybody could get 20. You know? And the distribution of intensity would look like this, you know, on average, people are going to push it to an average amount of reps, maybe 10. You know, people are gonna leave twice the amount of work they already did in the tank, because, oh, it's starting to burn, this kinda hurts, you know? And then the amount of people who can push it to the actual limit which they're capable of, and I'm not talking about like, oh, you need to curl the 100 pound dumbbells like Kevin Lavroni to get big. Even if you're just doing the 30s, if you can really push it to the point of, well, to a level which you know is pretty fucking good for you like there's no chance you're getting one more rep and you you can say that honestly without delusion then that's a good set man try to repeat those as often as possible and if that's if that's something you can do if that's something you can manage then you will see the results from it very soon very quickly but let's uh let's get in there and get started I think two of these will be good. Kind of a 
long D-handle. Sort of combines a rope and a straight bar. I like it. Oh, give it a second. Okay. Let's get some dumbbell curls going. One more of those. There's like zero swinging on those. It's way too fucking heavy. Drop set to the 60. Time for something. Not sure what. Triceps, obviously. Now we go back to basics. This heavy ass push downs. Yeah. 
One more. Okay. Let's do some machine curls. For this kind of curl machine, single arm instead of both at once. And then a little bit lighter than typical. Usually I just stack it and kind of throw it around, which I might do next time. But for this one, single arm, lighter, kind of hold it. Solid burn. Probably a different style. Let's run up some dips. Hi. Let's do some bicep bias pull downs and then we're done. Actually, depending on how I feel pump wise, I might just call it after one set of these. So, <laughs> so instead of six, I'm not with a five set bicep down. Typically a little lower volume than normal, but based on feeling, I mean, you already know it's under these sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, bye. All right. Yeah, that's it. One thing that's nice about these is you can give yourself pretty much fucking assistant reps just because your lats can take over just a little. But let's pose down. It's been a while since I posed down over here. Usually I kind of avoid the, this is so stupid to call it a journey, to come downstairs to this room and just pose in front of the dumbbells. But in terms of pump, well, let's just let it speak for itself. But I'm beginning to believe that part of this fullness from this arm day was just from generalized inflammation because I feel like a dog right now and not in a cool way. Ugh. If I feel this scrappy tomorrow after cardio, then I'm just going to turn it into a rest day. I'm not anti-rest day, but I am anti, uh, let's just say, unnecessary rest day, you know? But if you have an actual reason to skip, and I don't mean skip, I mean recover so that you can come back stronger, then that is fucking highly valid. So let's see. <laughs> What'd I tell you? What'd I freaking tell you? Who doesn't love a fucking fully pumped arm? Whoa. Oh my goodness, what else? What else do we got here? Just a full on. Oof. Should have a measuring tape right now. Honestly, this is a pretty good one. Oh man. Scoot over somewhere in frame. Oh yeah. Let's roll. Let's just jump to the car talk. All right, I think I have, I think I've got a perfect topic of discussion right after I say, holy cow, my arms are still fucking burning. Left tricep, for whatever reason in particular, can I feel it going? In a good way, not like a, not a bad way or anything. And then just overall, even though, dude, fuck, man, I felt like total shit that whole lift. Um, in a relative sense. Of course, I'm still doing my sets hard, but I could tell I just feel a little scrappy. Not fun, not fun. But if that's you, and then you still decide, all right, I'm going to go to the gym. Hey, push it, man. You'll feel better afterwards for sure. Even if you're going to still feel bad afterwards. Uh, but <clears throat> when I finish posing down, you know, when I look at myself with a pump, and I'm like, yeah, nice. When I go home later and like, you know, I'm going to shower or whatever, or I'm going to wake up in the morning and I see myself pumpless in front of the mirror. Am I going to say, what the fuck is that? I look like shit. Fuck. Put my clothes back on as quick as possible. Well, not exactly. Not freaking exactly. And uh, I mean, this goes for anybody, regardless of, you know, your build. Because <clears throat> even dudes who are fucking, you know, jacked beyond belief. There's a reason body dysmorphia is such a thrown around term. Uh, fuck, man. I mean, I think, I mean, again, like I was saying in the, on the way here, sort of the mind leads uh, and then kind of a little, little bit of a branch off of that idea is your perception is going to play a very major role in your, uh, I mean, let's just say subjective levels of fucking you know, happiness, right? When I look at, um, <clears throat> or, all I'm really trying to say, or kind of the, what I'm boiling all this down to is I think for someone to have the mentality of going to the gym and working out and, you know, pushing themselves hard for the main driver of that action to be the thought process of, you oh, I look like shit, fuck. I can't keep looking like this anymore. I need to, you know, 
that's just so negative, man. Jeez. And I can't really... It's not like I could... If that's you, I'm, it's not like I can just say, oh, don't do that. And then suddenly you're going to be like, oh, whoa. Oh, sweet, this is great. You know, I can't... That's not what I'm trying to say. But I just find that any anything particularly negative is not going to be an awesome motivator. Definitely not long-term. I mean, look, you're still going to get jacked. Somebody who goes to the gym consistently for years and, you know, gets reasonably smart about their diet in terms of using diet to actually, you know, improve their physique and make progress over time. I don't mean smart like, oh, never eat fucking fruit snacks. If you do that for years, you are going to look like you lift guaranteed, as long as you do it hard. Now, someone who is kind of excited about the prospect of gradual progress, likes the process, kind of enjoys pushing themselves, he is going to have a very good time. He's going to enjoy it. He's going to see, you know, month to month over time changes to his build, and that's going to hype him up and say, okay, let's keep going. I want to see more. And I'm not even talking about like an out-of-control spiral getting up to 300 pounds. I mean, just even on the path to going from like a 150-pounder to like a lean 180-pounder. That is an insane fucking jump. You know, don't get me wrong. But the guy who can enjoy that and in his mind focus on the positives, more often than not, he's going to have more fun. He's just going to enjoy it. Whereas the guy who's constantly undermining himself and like, oh, I'm I'm so fucking weak. Oh, oh, I look like shit. Just, just constantly having that sort of loop of thoughts running around your head day after day. Oh my goodness. Come on. It's just not fucking cool. You know? And again, I'm not you, so I, I'm not going to try to control your thoughts. But if I were to have the choice between trying to, let's just say, <clears throat> methodically put energy into you know, kind of hype cool thoughts and sort of try to block out anything like oh, I, oh my triceps are kind of fucking small oh shit oh fuck I wish my legs were bigger like it, anything like that you gotta remember thoughts will just pop up in your mind and you can't control them right that's your subconscious you look at something <clears throat> immediately thoughts are gonna bubble up in your mind you know, but if you choose to keep putting energy into them, then you're just consistently like reiterating to yourself, I have a problem. I have a problem. And even if you do have a problem, like I'm not going to say if you're like a hundred pound overweight dude, I'm not trying to say, look in the mirror and say, I look great. That's not what I'm saying. But <clears throat> to constantly be thinking, oh, dude, I'm so, oh, fuck. Or like you look at some old pictures when you used to do sports in high school or whatever. And you're like, oh, God, it looks like, oof. Just to be focusing on kind of the present state of where you are. And like, oh, this sucks. Just, ah. really, I'm just kind of, I'm trying to preach against having a negative mentality like that. Because you can look at something like that in two ways. You know, let's say that you, that's you. You got a real fucking long journey. Like, I'm, I'm not talking a few months. I mean legit years of consistent training before you're going to have six-pack abs or a bicep vein or whatever else. You know, to be just constantly, oh, this sucks. Do you think that's going to make you excited to go hard? Is that going to make you excited to wake up in the morning? Like, somebody who loves their job, uh, he's going to wake up and go, oh, shit, this is going to be sweet. Let's hit this shit. Somebody who hates their fucking job wakes up and they fucking dread it. They wish they could go back to bed. Like the sound of their alarm does not excite them. It just fucking, you know, it ruins the zen that they feel when they're sleeping, you know? So, I'm not necessarily saying a, a good recommendation on how to change that. I'm not a psychologist. But if that's you and you can tell you're constantly just ripping on yourself, yeesh, man. Urgh. You gotta, you gotta change that up. That is a problem, which will uh, 
will take dividends. Whereas being excited about potential progress and the grind itself, that's going to pay dividends, you know? So that's all I'm saying there, right? And that's, I know it's so silly. That's such a classic, like, you know, just be happy about it, you know, just, uh, or when someone says, uh, I, I've been seeing this quote float around Instagram a lot. It's like, if you can be in a bad mood for no reason, just be in a good mood for no reason. Doesn't that sound fun? Isn't that cool? It's not that fucking simple, man. Come on. Because uh, being upset about shit, it's very easy. And it's very comforting, too. There's kind of a self-loathing... There's kind of a comfort in self-loathing. In self-pity. Uh, because it's like, oh... Oof. Because you kind of adopt the mentality of, like, a victim to your circumstances. And then it's like, oh... Well, it's not my fault. It's my circumstances. Fuck, it's, it's because of this, this, and this that I'm where I am now. It's, I can't control that. No, poor me. And I don't mean just about lifting. You can, take this, you can take this in the context of fucking anything. You know? And sure, you might be right. You know, this isn't a perfectly fair world. People get fucked up pretty bad. You know, nobody, people don't all just start off with a happy-go-lucky setup. Like, family-wise, life-wise, fucking health-wise, anything, you know. But that's just kind of the cards you're dealt sometimes. And the people who actually make moves, even with a shitty hand, they get props, man. This, uh, <clears throat> it kind of, I think this is something as of late, like the last, maybe, maybe I just see it more because I'm on Instagram and TikTok or whatever else. But it's like a contest of who is the most just unlucky. Like, uh, it's like a pity contest. Come on. Not cool. Not freaking cool. You know, nobody gets props for having the most trauma. Right? But if that's you, I'm not invalidating you. But, fuck, man. You just gotta deal with it. And I, I don't mean it like that simply, but I, I kind of do. Like, you gotta take a realistic and actual, like not just a delusional, like, oh, it's, like take a legitimate, objective look at your circumstances and then decide what the best move is. You can't always make a perfect move, but even if you just make one small move, which puts you in a slightly better position than you were yesterday, the more of those that you can do constantly, the better. So this, uh, take with that what you will. And I, if anybody's watching this, I'm sure some specific aspect of your life came to mind when I kind of said, like, you know, what's something that you kind of hold yourself back from because you have a certain amount of excuses? If something immediately popped up in your head and you're like, oh, shit, yeah, I guess I probably should be doing X, Y, Z. Fuck, man. I'm not in control of your life, and neither will I benefit if you start killing it. But, I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to live in a world with more people on their A-game in all sorts of aspects of life? So, take with that what you will. And I'm not saying, uh... Hey, you get it. If you got something out of that, good. But... I am uh, I'm ready for bed. I'm going to eat a big-ass meal. I predict ground beef, cheese, barbecue sauce, two packs of ramen, two liters of water with electrolytes, all my vitamins, and then I'm going to pass out indefinitely. So tomorrow will either be a rest day or hamstrings, depending on if I still feel like shit. But what do you think? Uh, what do you think? Leave a... Well, we'll just see you tomorrow, but I'll see you then.